people are trying to teach you how to come in and trade actively in stocks. Holy macaroni! Well, I regard that as roughly equivalent to trying to induce a bunch of young people to start off on hair. It is really stupid. My head is spinning in circles right now. In a world populated by swindlers and fake gurus, certainly the disciples of Charlie Munger, of Warren Buffett, the value investors, they are not going to be like this. But they are actually the worst without even realizing it. Good day, fellow investors. In an attempt to make this YouTube channel better, I embarked on an adventure watching hundreds of videos from finance YouTube channels and trying to learn from them what I can improve on my own channel, what's working for them and what's not working. And I found something interesting. None of these value investing channels, including my own, were growing. Channels with millions of subscribers such as Graham Stephan and Andre G, they were still growing their views and subscribers by double digits each year. You might argue that value investing is not that popular. Of course, these channels are not going to do that well. But ask any random person on the streets to name you one investor. And most of them are going to name you Warren Buffett, a value investor. Hundreds of people gather every year, if not thousands, to watch Warren Buffett speak in Omaha. That was just last week. And there are millions of people every year waiting impatiently for his letter or to watch his interviews on CNBC on Yahoo Finance. The worst of all these value investing channels is of course my own. As a value investor, I want to make videos about companies that I'm following. Companies in my portfolio, companies in my watch list. These are companies I'm really passionate about. I want to talk about them. And if you want to be successful, on YouTube or anywhere else, you need to do something that you're passionate about. You always need to niche down. So we have the finance niche where we have all these channels from trying to make money on Amazon. Then we have the sub niche about investing. We have another sub sub niche about stock investing. And then we have the sub sub niche of value investing. But the reality is that there is no such thing as a sub niche of value investing on YouTube. Instead, we have a few small islands like Madagascar or even California. Is California an island? If you look at the map behind me, it's clearly marked as an island. So all I know, California is an island for today. We need to understand why people see these finance videos. Everyone is interested to make money. And this has been since time immemorial, even before the invention of YouTube. That's why people sailed to California, people sailed to the Americas to discover a new world. It was more than just discovery. They were trying to go to India to get the spices. So it was just about maximizing profit, about making the most money possible. And that's why in California, there was the gold rush. That's why people moved there. But today we don't need to do that. We can sit in the comfort of our homes and watch YouTube videos on how to make money easily online most of the time. Making money online is such a competitive, such a big niche that it is very unlikely that someone looking for my videos, wanting to invest in the stock market, value investing will find my videos. They're more likely going to find investing in Bitcoin. If they refine their search, trying to look investing in stocks, they are going to be given the big companies, Amazon, Tesla, and everything else. But unlikely, they're going to find my videos. This is the reality, unfortunately. And it's because once you make some money on YouTube or even on the internet, you think you're qualified to talk about it, to sell people a course about it. For example, Ali Abdal, one of the largest personal development channel in the world. He usually talks about productivity, but now he's making videos about personal finance, about investing. Even Shelby Church, which started as a vlog, now is making videos about economics. And these videos are going to reach a wide audience, bigger than any of the value investing channels can perceive. Finance is also one of the most competitive and one of the most lucrative niche on YouTube. That's why so many people want to make videos about finance. So now me and other value investors, we have to compete with all these people. I'm not worried about the competition. There's always going to be competition, but it's not just about the value investing sub niche, which doesn't really exist. It is about competing with Graham Stephan, with Andre G. It is even competing with Ali Abdal now. One of the arguments that the value investors will then make is that they don't really care about the views. They make the videos for fun. 
they make the videos just because they want to talk about value investing. This is their passion. This is what I used to say. But unfortunately, if you think about it, for value investing, for investing, it's not just for fun. It's more than that. Because there are people putting their hard-earned money investing based on your recommendation. You are accountable to these people. In many cases, the people investing, they don't really understand the risk. They just invest because they like this creator. So the creator recommended a stock. It was successful. Now they think that the next recommendation will also be successful. I made this mistake too. I had investments that failed. For example, UNFI. And I know many people followed me into that investment. Unfortunately, without understanding the risk. And for most of the history of my YouTube channel, the views have been coming from search. Once again, reinforcing those islands. Because when people are searching for your videos, YouTube is not going to recommend the videos to new people. So the people who already joined the island, they stay on this island. The biggest danger with YouTube is the YouTube algorithm because it will serve you what you want to watch. I don't know about the other channels, I don't have access to their analytics, but I can speculate that these channels do most of their views come from search because they are not growing. Even a stock investing channel, probably the largest in the world, Jeremy, financial education, he's barely growing. And even looking at his videos, how he makes the videos, he's not trying hard enough. One popular value investor on YouTube, Daniel Brock, you look at all his thumbnails, it's the same. I understand that value investors, stock investors, and I will include Jeremy from financial education. Let's just say he's a value investor who likes to overpay for everything. Jeremy just keeps wanting to go to expensive restaurants that I agree to go to really just out of politeness. And I understand then because we like to analyze companies, we like fundamental analysis. We don't really want to spend our time making good videos, but unfortunately, others who are not really talking about value investing, talking about crypto, they are making great videos and attracting all these people trying to make money online. This is very unfortunate. And I can tell you that as soon as I can afford an editor, I'm going to get one for my thumbnails, for my videos and everything else because you need to know how to delegate. All these stock investing channels, they have found their small, loyal audience who never forget to smash the like button. Daniel Brock understood something very important. As a value investor on YouTube, he has to talk about the popular companies. That's why you see him making videos after the earnings of Apple. And he talks about these companies from a value investor point of view, which is great in my opinion. But a value investor also needs to have skin in the game. And did we ever see his real portfolio? The portfolio on my channel as well as a demo portfolio. And it also is not 100% a replication of my personal portfolio because I like to invest in smaller cap businesses that tend to have lower volume, a lot more volatility. And they're just not stocks that I would ever talk about on a YouTube channel. That's understandable because even Warren Buffett never used to disclose his positions until he had to do it because his portfolio got too big and he had to file to the SEC. Even now he tries his best to hide his investments. But Warren Buffett did not go and write about companies that he was not investing in. Imagine for a minute that Warren Buffett was in his 20s today and he was a YouTuber. Do you think with the same principles that he applied in his life? for all the 93 years. Do you think he would be making videos about companies after their earnings? Of course not. This is not value investing. Neither did Benjamin Graham. Do you know why Warren Buffett says that the intelligent investor, let's pretend it's in my hand, why the intelligent investor is the best book about investing ever written. It's not security analysis, which is also written by Benjamin Graham. This is the Bible of value investing. But Warren Buffett tells us that this is the best book about investing. It's because it's for everyone. And Benjamin Graham wrote something very important in the book. He differentiates between enterprising investors and defensive investors. The defensive investors, they don't know much about investing. They want to get started. They just want over the long term to make some money, make 10%, 12% a year. While the enterprising investor, this is what they do full time. They want to make, let's say, 15, 20% a year. I am an enterprising investor. Most of you should not be enterprising investors. This book is for enterprising investors. Not everyone has to read security analysis. 
actually it is better you choose either you are a defensive investor which most people 99% of people should be or an enterprising investor so you can be happy with 12% returns a year when the market is making 10% over the long term this is great for you or you can be happy making 15% but of course then you have to do it full time but the worst are the hybrid investors they try to be both on YouTube unfortunately when people watch these value investing channels they become hybrid investors these channels are incubators for hybrid investors. I would say 95% of people should not, that are now investing, should not be investing because they don't understand what they are doing. And right. that, that will end up ugly. That always ends up ugly. If you read the letters of Warren Buffett, this is written for everyone. It is in the same language as the intelligent investor and he said in the last letter that he was writing this letter thinking of his sister as the audience member so even if you're an enterprising investor or a defensive investor you can certainly understand the letters of warren buffett and this is what makes them great this should be the same about youtube videos about value investing and it's not just warren buffett all of the great investors even peter lynch he wrote a best-selling book what up on Wall Street about investing? It is best selling because millions of people bought the book. But even me as an enterprising investor, I can learn from this. It is something that the average person can replicate and even the enterprising investor, they can replicate. It should be the same for value investing videos. People watching these videos, they should know, okay, where am I? Am I a defensive investor? Am I an enterprising investor? How do I replicate what this person is telling us? And none of these investors, Benjamin Graham, Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, none of them made stock recommendations. They were always using the past as an example. And then the viewers, the readers, they can use this information to invest for the future. One channel that made this transition is Hamish Hodder. He is a value investor. He was making videos about fundamental analysis about companies in his portfolio. He was even on Ben Gordon channel. Now he stopped making such videos. His videos now are mostly about macroeconomics. And I believe that his transitions was a little too much. He moved a little too much from value investing and he's looking more and more like new money. They make about the same video all the time. I think they are great friends. So they are the Graham Stephan and Andre Jake of Australia, which is an island like California. And there's another mistake that he made. His videos lost their personal touch. He used to make videos about his investments, but now when he talks about macroeconomics, he's just posting an interview of Ray Dalio and then making his commentaries about that. Where is he talking about how this interview of Ray Dalio now affects his investment decisions? In a way, he's becoming another CNBC, which is something I believe most YouTubers don't want to be. The purpose of YouTube is for creators to create a more personal relationship with their viewers. Unless, of course, you really want to be like CNBC and compete with them. And why not actually bring Ray Dalio, bring Warren Buffett as guests on your channel and interview them? Let's say, hypothetically, one of these YouTubers is going to interview Warren Buffett one day. Who is it most likely going to be? Sven Gaulin, Daniel Pro, or Graham Stephan? I'm sure you know the answer. It's going to be Graham Stephan. It's not because Graham Stephan has a bigger channel. He's just more relatable to the average viewer and also to the great investors. They can also talk about frugality, so they will get along. He's not just good at making YouTube videos. He was good at building a business around his YouTube videos. And if you're talking about investing in businesses, you need to know how to build a good business. And Graham Stephan did that perfectly well. This is what Warren Buffett did with Berkshire Hathaway. And he knew how to build a community around his investing. That's why thousands of people flock to Omaha every year. That's one of the reasons why I decided to found the Super Investors Club. I wanted to build a community to talk about the art of investing without the complicated charts, the complicated spreadsheets, because as Peter Lynch says, investing is more an art than a science. And unfortunately, many of the value investing YouTubers, they have lost that. 
they don't understand this anymore or maybe they understand it but their videos are not about that. You can remove those value investing YouTubers and put a computer there, you're going to get the same video. It will be great to see another value investor walking on the streets in his corner of the world with a gimbal and just talking, just telling us how he applies value investing in his life every day. That would be great but we don't have this unfortunately. That's how actually Graham Stephan started. He was not talking about value investing but about real estate. He still makes personal last video a few years ago. He talked about moving to Nevada from California. Maybe he didn't like living on an island anymore. There is this human touch. We can follow him, work with him on his journey. We want to know what is the end game. Is he going to succeed? Will he someday become a billionaire? And in a way, he inspires many people, including me. I know that there have been some controversy regarding some of his sponsorship This He's not perfect, nobody is. We can certainly learn from him and make value investing more entertaining, more fun. Because then it can reach more people. There is something called edutainment. It's not just education, it should be entertaining. But unfortunately, I don't see any value investing channel doing that well. And if we can make more entertaining videos, we can finally break free from these islands and join the continent like California did. The reason why I'm mentioning California so much in this video is something that I learned recently from a channel called J Foreman. You look at his latest video, it's about maps, and this video gained over 1 million views. So you're telling me that a video about maps gained 1 million views, but a video about how we should be investing in the future is not going to get 1 million views? Have a nice day and goodbye.